and he got this lip on the back of the jet ski and just projectiled him for like 40 feet in the air. And I saw him go, Mee! and I just kept riding the wave. Hello there, I'm Ross Clark Jones. I'm in the Upkick studio for Fishbowl Friday. It's like a fucking lottery, isn't it? Look at First question. Okay, from Mike Castle. Where is your fave spot and why? So, I have many favourite spots. I mean, it's where I am at the moment. This is my favourite spot. But I like to surf Sunset. I like to surf Waimea. I like to surf Nazare in Portugal. I like to drive on the autobahns in Germany. Nürburgring is my favourite track. Um, so, you know, my favourite spot is where my heart is and where my girlfriend is. Alex J Berkey underscore. I always wanted to learn to surf. Don't live by the coast though. Going to start soon. I'm 20 though. Is this too late to learn? Learn to ride big waves at least pipeline. Yes, mate, you've missed the boat, I think. <laughs> 20, no, seriously, you can start at any age, but 20s, I mean, I started at 11 years old. Um, so 20 is not too old to start, but it's one of those things you never stop learning. Um, and if you want to, uh, I, don't, I don't advise to go to pipeline, not at 20. I don't know, don't know about pipeline, but you can tow in. I'll tow in at Nazare at 20 without any experience at all. As long as you can hold your breath, you don't even have to swim. You can use this airlift thing, quicksilver, just pull it, whatever. I'll pick you up. As long as you hold your breath, I'll tow you in. Oh, <laughs> there's a good mate from Rhino, Rhinox. Okay, howdy. With tow surfing, Partners are essential. Who's the best driver, partner you've towed with? Rope, work line, reading position, endurance, to keep up with you. Decision making, etc. No need to mention the worst. You are the, definitely the most radical driver I've been with. Cheers, Rhino. So Rhino, I must say you are the best driver I've drive, driven with. Um, I've been driving with you for a, um, in a secret spot down the coast in Victoria for the last 10 years and we've had a great relationship we all you know the, you know it all works fine it's a relationship thing but it keeps changing I hate to be a slut but I, I need to move you know I, I have to I can't get fixed committed with one driver it could be um, a bad decision because you could you're not used to the other drivers that drive faster or slower and you have to, you have to mix it up. Here his name is Six Star Luck. Does your mum think you're crazy? Well, she's dead. So I don't know what she's thinking now, but she's, you know, she died like 92, probably before you were born. So I, didn't, I don't think she thought I was crazy. Um, not at all. I, I think she, uh, she used to think my brother was crazy. So I had that to go on with and he was way crazier than me. So he taught me how to drive, like go sideways down these dirt tracks all those years ago. And he, he um, took me surfing. He, yeah, I miss him. I miss him. <laughs> Next. <laughs> From Juan Kov, best core exercise. Thanks, Russ, and keep charging, so inspiring. Well, yeah, I do a thousand sit-ups every morning, as you can see. Um, now, I think the core exercises, like uh, stand-up paddling is really good for your core. Um, you know, just, just holding your core, even when you're talking like this, you know. Holding your breath underwater, I mean, is probably one of the best core exercises you can do. Like when you're getting washed around like so violently underwater and you're getting hammered, rolling around, you sort of need to relax in your brain and tense up like a ball um, so you don't get hit by the board or, uh, you know, rocks or whatever's going to hit you. 
Um, they ask me how long do I hold my breath underwater, and the answer is as long as I have to. Um, you know, if I do it for a minute or something on a pool or two minutes, it just doesn't count. It's when you're getting smashed like, like a stampede of, you just, it's like a violent uh, washing machine. I mean, you, you think longer, always longer than you have to. Um, I can stay under here all day if you, you know, um, but it, it's gonna eventually let you go. It's easier said um, than done, I guess. Biggest wave ever surfed after a big night out? <laughs> That's a loaded question. Yeah, I think it was about phantoms in the 90s. Been up all night, just, you know, with Tom Carroll and yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's just talking and, you know, the thing is I don't drink much and um, I never drank that much. So um, it, it didn't impair my surfing the next day. So I could go out without any sleep, no problems. Ever let go of the rope and receipt, oh, and regretted it? Um, no. Actually, no regrets. When I let go of the rope, because it's for a reason, I want to catch the wave. Um, I've let go of the rope because it's a closeout or something. Um, I actually held on to the rope and regretted it. <laughs> I was in uh, 1998, January 28. It was over 20 years ago to, the, you know, not, yeah, 20 years ago. And um, Tony Ray and I, faced with the biggest swell in history. Um, it was 45 feet uh, on the buoys, which is a 90 foot face. It was probably 90 to 100 foot waves going through. We'd never seen waves like this before because we we just had the jet ski like three years on or something. And um, and Tony, like I said, he, he got me three waves really good. And I said, one more, one more. And he's like, fuck, come on, change, you greedy bitch. I went, no come on, one more, one more. And that's, I kind of regretted that one more. And I've never said this one more again, because he, uh, he drove, he just drove me into this closeout, like 40 foot closeout. It was, it was the wall was heading like miles down the coast. So I'm going, what the fuck are you doing? Look at me, he wouldn't look at me. And, uh, and Tony's going, and this, this little puddle jumper, which is like the jet ski, I think it was running on one cylinder. Um, and it was, it was, wasn't powerful enough. And it was ding, 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 ding. And, and, I, and it was just, he was driving me under the wave and I should have let go, but I was like, fucking come stop, what are you doing? And he just, and we were down the face and I was overtaking him on, the, on, on my surfboard. And he was on the, on the jet ski. I'm going, oh, fuck, that's when I let go of the rope. And he got this lip on the back of the jet ski, just projectiled him for like 40 feet in the air. And I saw him go, Mee! and I just kept riding the wave, you know, it was with this big foam ball of big cloud. And I just kept going and then, and I was pissed off. Like we've lost the ski and that was our baby, you know, the seat and the, the ski was, you know, um, capsized and, I was like, fucking idiot, what'd you do that for? You know, he's like, he was just in shock, like, like a cat. <laughs> he was just, Ding. and we're at the end of the ski, one of these, and I, was, and I was like, I was so pissed off, and I really regret, regretted it when I saw the footage, because I, I mean, it was so heavy when I saw, you know, Tony getting smacked, he could have got killed. And I felt like a greedy, selfish idiot at, at the time. But then, we, we, then we, we drifted for miles out to sea. We, the next stop was like US mainland, I don't know. And the helicopters were filming the extreme and it was extreme fil uh, film for IMAX. And fucking no one would get us. I mean, we were just lost at sea. And uh, people said, yeah, we'll come and get you later. And then we found us like three hours later. Harrison Edwards, way. Way we get a Roth. I don't know how that. I'm at your local. I think bells. What drives you to continue chasing bigger and bigger waves? Is it the froth or a personal challenge to ride the biggest wave? Will there ever be the biggest wave? Do you ever have moments with family life that question question of you should slow down when considering the dangers? Yeah, well, I'm 52, or 51 actually, I'm 52 this year, 
Um, so during the th 20s, you had this uh, immortality syndrome, like a young man's immortality syndrome. <laughs> like I didn't care what I do. I was like uh, reckless, completely reckless, taking off on waves that just stupid. I knew I wasn't going to make and just wouldn't get, wouldn't get hurt, uncalculated. Um, and in the 30s, I had children, got married, and everyone's saying, yeah, you've got to get children now, you have to slow down. And I'm like, fuck, really? And then you start to think about it, like, oh, I must slow down for the kids. And then the kids are not going to be happy unless I'm happy. So I decided, like, no, nah, I'm going to do it. I keep going. So then in the 40s, in 40s, you're more refined, if you like, if that's a word for me. But... Um, and then, and then on the 50s, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Would you rather have a horrible short-term memory or a horrible long-term memory? See, what's, I can't even remember what I wrote. So. Six Starluck. Okay, he's, just, he's got a good quiz. What age will you give up big wave riding? If you get, you know, if you can't hold your breath, you can't surf. So, till I uh, till I feel that, it's just be. Hopefully, it's a natural progression. I, I watched Tom Carroll in his approaching fifty, and he became a pussy. Seriously, he was fucking. I've never seen anyone take off on waves before that. In his forties, like pipeline, just bah. He, he he scared me. I'm like fucking hell. He's just taking off these waves like. Incredible, and then he turned into a little pussy, you know, on my, on my shoulder, my, my neck, and I'm like, fuck, what happened to him? I'm going, is that going to happen to me when I turn 50? And I was scared because of that, because I'm like, oh, is that what happens when you turn 50? I'm like, no, nah, didn't happen to me. <laughs> Next. Okay, Wayne King. Wayne King? Wayne King. Wayne King. Hi, mate. When you first paddled out at Waimea, with MR for that heat, do you wish you had that heat when you were younger? I mean, I was 20. Fuck, how young do you want me to be? I mean, that was my first year in Hawaii. You know, I was running around, I couldn't find a board, no one lent me a board. I rode a 710, which is unheard of at Waimea. I ride a 10 foot surfboard now and always have since. Um, I don't know how I rode the 710. I still have that board, by the way. Stephen Bisgrove Zdunek. Dunek. Really? Is that a name? <laughs> when you decided to change from kneeboarding. <laughs> Fuck it, it's out there. I was a kneeboarder. Yep, I, yep, I admit it. I was on my knees. You're going to crawl before you stand up. So that's what I did. And my brother said, you are so fucked at kneeboarding. <laughs> he said, you guys, you should stand up. I remember that. When did you see a Korean surfing? I was actually 12 years old, and I was, and I was looking at these um, guys surfing, and my, my dad and my dad and brother said, "Oh, what do you want to do?" And I said, "I want to be a surfer." And my dad says, "No, that's that's uh, not a career." And I said, oh, "Maybe not. Maybe maybe it is." And my brother said, "No, nah, you can't surf good enough." Like you know. And we'll see about that. I just sort of remember going, "Fuck, I don't know. This is what I'm going to do." I was 12. I'm going to do something. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I wasn't going to be a world champion or anything, but I'm going to make a lifestyle out of surfing. And I have. At 52 years old, I've still got sponsored. Red Bull, Quicksilver, thank you. What is the dumbest way you've been injured and how? I think snowboarding. Like, I, I was on the ice. That was... It fucked me, right? Like, I was... You know, and I'd been up all night partying with Gary Elkinson, Kong, you know, like, and I was like, I was so unstable and I just went, went into this berm of, of this ice and just flipped on my shoulder and I, I put my hand down and just jolted my um, shoulder and uh, dislocated it. The dumbest thing, I went to, went to Brazil and a, a, a guy gave me a cortisone shot and there's this old guy, it's like, I reckon he was a 90-year-old doctor with full bottle-top glasses. It looks like a fucking, uh, uh, what do you call it, candid camera. I go, is this, this is a joke. And he had this syringe and he was shaking, putting it into my shoulder. I'm going, fuck, 
this is surreal, like really? And he's like, mm. and he jabbed me. I'm like, fuck, it just missed my whole bone or whatever, the tendon, it went straight to the nerve. And I'm like, oh, and he just jabbed me again. And I was, I was in so much pain. And then I, uh, so I went out surfing and like that afternoon, I'm like, fuck, it's fine, it's fixed. And it's the worst thing to do, like get a good cortisone shot and mask the actual injury. And then I went out at Backdoor Pipeline in my heat of the last uh, competition, professional surfing competition I did at Pipeline and crawled there, I clawed down the face of this wave and then just snapped my bicep tendon. Just went snap. And I was like, it was, the, it was the silliest string of injuries that um, progressed from that idiocracy. <laughs> no, <laughs> no more questions. Hello, <laughs> hello, <laughs> nothing.